Okay, it is week two of the summer wrestling. I'm Tony Kegger, and you'll know what the summer wrestling is. I have all the rules about it in the description, and everything you need to know about the summer wrestling for every week will be in the description. That's where I'll have all the matches and all my rankings and everything. So let's get going. I'm going to post this on Monday, but I decided I've already seen my older matches I want to see for this week, so I'm just going to get this video done and do it now. Okay, the first match I watched for this week. I saw on July 1st was The Rock vs. Goldberg at Backlash 2003. Now I think this was The Rock's um, last singles match in WWE for WrestleMania 28. So that was against John Cena. So from this part, from Backlash 2003 until WrestleMania 28, in what year was that? Uh, 2012, I think. Rock didn't have any singles matches. So this was his last one for like nine years. And um, so yeah, it's like a dream match. This was The Rock versus Goldberg. The Rock was one of the biggest stars in WWE. And Goldberg was one of the biggest stars in WCW. And let's see, what did I write about this match? So like, this match got 13 minutes. I gave it three and a half stars. It's probably one of the highest ratings this match has ever gotten. I like I liked this match a lot. I like how Goldberg looked in this match. He looked very strong. He was beating up Rock pretty good. And then and Rock, um, Goldberg's going for a spear in the Rock and Rock moved all the way. So that gave Rock an advantage because Goldberg was working with a bad shoulder. But Goldberg looked strong again by kicking out of the Rock bottom. They kicked out of the, the people's elbow. And they hit the Rock with three spears and finally got the win with the jackhammer. I thought it was a really good match. It wasn't a great match. But I just love how they booked Goldberg. This was like the Rock's this was a match for Rock left to become a Hollywood star. So I like the way how they, the Rock just put Goldberg over in his, in his last match. This was Goldberg's like debut match, pay per view for WWE. So good way for Goldberg to make his star in WWE. He looked really strong. Got a huge win over the Rock. It was very clean. So I like that match. Good, good booking. Uh, next match I got I watched Chris Jericho versus Evan Bourne. Fatal 4 Way 2010. I remember this match when it happened. This was when um, the storyline was that um, Chris Jericho was losing a lot of matches. And so one time on Raw, he's like, okay, fine. I'm going to face Evan Bourne here. And if I lose this match, I'm done. I'm going to quit the WWE. And he uh, won that match against Evan Bourne. Then they had the rematch on the pay per view. And Evan Bourne actually won this match against Chris Jericho on a pay per view. And this was only like a few months after um, WrestleMania 26. When Chris Jericho was a champion, he and he beat Edge in a championship match. So this this should have been a big win for Evan Bourne. And unfortunately, nothing happened with Bourne after this. He just Bourne he won taking championship with Kofi Kingston like once or twice, but he he never won a singles champion. He was never near a Kyle champion. He was never a U.S. champion. Some good spots in this match. Um, got 12 minutes, which would have been nice if I had more time. And I gave three and a half stars. And I wonder if um, if I had seen this match, match live, it maybe would give it a higher rating. It's just because you know, it was just a big win for Jer for Evan Bourne at the time, and you kind of I'm sure like um, can't remember, but I'm sure some people probably thought it was gonna lead to a big p push for Evan Bourne. It just never happened. But I also remember like a lot of people um, were not happy for Bourne or actually more upset that Chris Jericho was losing to Evan Bourne, thinking like you know, I think there's a lot of Chris Jericho fans back then, so. When they saw him lost to Evan Bourne, it, it, they saw it as more as a bad thing for Jericho than a good thing for Bourne. Cause Jericho still had a lot of fans, and I guess their fans didn't think Jericho should have been losing to a guy like Evan Bourne. So, so, so there's some mixed reaction for that match. It's pretty nice stars. It wasn't great, but it was more than good. So, the next match I saw um, it was the famous Montreal screw job. Survivor Series 1997, Shawn Michaels versus Bret Hart. I want to see his match because I love the match. I know the, I know how it ends, but I never really seen the whole match, so I just want to see it. And I'm surprising, like I didn't know about this match, but they had a seven minute brawl before the match even started. Like you know, they got everybody got in the ring, Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels, and they just started brawling over the place, and like the, the bell bell rang, so it was never not official match. But officially, his match was 12 minutes, but. Little LeBron, he was really closer to a 20-minute match. And 
But once they got into the ring, once the match officially started, it wasn't um, that interesting. I like the brawling stuff better because they really like made it feel like you know they really hate each other and then and that and they're brawling so much that like several referees were trying to break them up and even like Vince Man was out there trying to like break them up, trying to get him into the ring, trying to get some match started. So that was cool seeing like how you know make it like feel like a big deal. And they were brawling in the crowd and they were brawling by the entrance ramp. It was a crazy brawl. And what else I got? But yeah, when they got in the ring, it kind of got kind of boring. It felt like the crowd stopped cheering as much. The crowd got kind of quiet near the end. So yeah, at the end, like Bret Hart got screwed. I actually heard a funny story about this. Um, Stone Cold had interviewed Vince Russo for his podcast here. I think it was last week or this week, and he he talked about the Montreal screw job. And Vince Russo, as he said, it how um. He's the one who kind of pitched the idea of uh, Sean beating Brett with Sharpshooter. Because they were trying to figure out a way for, for um, Brett to get to lose the title. And Vince McMahon pitched like, Brett Hart like a bunch of ideas of how to like lose the title. And Brett Hart just shot all of them down. So finally, so Vincent Russo and McMahon were talking about three days before the pay-per-view. And finally, Russo just said, like, you know, why don't you just have um, Shawn Michaels put... Bret Hart and Sharpshooter, you know, have had the referee like call for the bell and that's it. And like Vince Russo just like, you know, threw it out there. He wasn't really expecting Mr. Man to actually like go with it. And that, the next day like McMahon just wasn't talking to Russo and then he McMahon didn't talk to Russo at all until um, you know, for the next few days, like so Survivor Series comes and Vince Russo's in the back watching the match of the monitor and he has he has no idea what the finish is gonna be. Because the last time he talked to Mr. Man was was that night when he pitched him his idea, and then he saw like the finish, and they they went with the finish Russo um, suggested. So that was kind of interesting. I know it was Russo's idea to um have Shawn Michaels like put a sharpshooter on Brett, and Brett doesn't tap out, but the referee calls the bell anyway. So it's it's all Vince Russo's fault. <laughs> uh, next match. Um, okay, here's this gonna be, sound weird. The great, the great Muda versus Dick Murdoch. This is from a show called NWA Power Hour. It was on September 29, 1989. Now the only reason I reviewed this match is because I was listening to one of Stone Cold's podcasts. At the end, he picked his match of the week, and he, he picked this match. And he said it was on YouTube, and I'm including the YouTube link in the in description. And so I was like, you know, why not? You know, I want to see some new matches. You know. Stone Cold recommended this match, so I'm just going to watch this match. It's got Jim Ross and Jim Cornette in the commentary. And, by the way, J Jim Ross and Jim Cornette are great in commentary. So that part's good. But that, the match, it's a really old school match. A lot of, like, um, you know, st storytelling and, like, working in the legs and stuff like that. And it was interesting to watch. I kind of enjoyed it, but it wasn't my kind of style. It didn't, like, got kind of boring to me. But it was okay match. I gave it three stars and one quarter. And by the way, I forgot if I rated the Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart match. That match got three and a half stars. Sorry about that. I forgot to rate that one. And so yeah, three, three, three and a one quarter stars for um, this match. Wasn't a great match. I didn't love it, but. I, I, I can see why he was talking recommended. It wasn't a terrible match. I like some parts of it. Just to me, it wasn't that great. Okay, next match. Cactus Jack versus Vader. Halloween Havoc, 1993 is the match. Been wanting to see for a while. Vader and, Vader and um, Cactus Jack had, had a great rivalry. If you don't know, Cactus Jack is Mick Foley. He was um, during the Vader Cactus Jack match when um, Mick Foley lost his ear in Germany. So this was a, um, this might have been their, like only pay per view um, singles match they've ever ha they had. So a Texas Death Match, which meant after every pinfall, there was a thirty second rest period. And after the rest period, um, the guy who got pinned had ten seconds to get up, or else he would lose the match. And there's no disqualifications, false count, count anywhere. And both catchers Jack and Vader were ble were bleeding a lot in this match. And I just thought this was a great match, great brawl. Jesse Ventura was on commentary and he was so fun to listen to. And the only thing bad about this match was like the ending. Where like, 
Texas Jack is trying to get up for the 10 count and Harley Race, who's like Vader's manager, he tasers him and the Texas Jack goes back down and the referee calls the 10. And I was, I was watching, I was thinking like, oh, I'm finished, this kind of bad, but maybe it's just me. And I was reading some reviews and everybody else did the same thing, like seeing how the, the finish kind of ruined the match. But other than the finish, I thought it was an awesome match. I gave it four and one quarter stars. And, I, and the famous Dave Meltzer actually gave this match four stars and three fourths. So, you know, I, I got all, almost all the reviews are bad. They gave it four stars or more. So, yeah, four stars and, and a quarter. It's my rating. Yeah, I got almost 60 minutes. So, it was pretty good, bro. I liked it a lot. So, let's see. Um, two, two more matches left. I got Ric Flair versus Triple H Survivor Series 2005. It's a last man standing match. I saw their, they had a match at Taboo Tuesday in 2005. It's my, I think that was a pay review before this one. And yeah, it's a steel cage match where Ric Flair won the title. I thought this was an awesome match. So I really wanted to see this match. Thinking that this one would be just as good as the Taboo Tuesday steel cage match, if not better. And I was very disappointed with this match. It got some cool things where like Ric Flair was attacked by Triple H with a screwdriver. I thought that was kind of like really interesting because you don't see that very often. And Ric Flair was bleeding a lot. And he did the spot where like Ric Flair got um, Ric Flair black dropped Triple H through the announce table, and then they had Ric Flair take free pedigrees and got he got from every single one of them. So he did some good stuff in here, but this match was 27 minutes long. I just felt that was way too long. And some of the stuff was like you know. Predictable first for a um, last minute standing match. A lot of chair shots and triple H using sledgehammer and you know a table spot. And I didn't see anything like new or interesting. And and really, it, the, the fact that it was 27 minutes just kept going, going felt like such a long match. And it really like you know bothered me. It felt like way too long. Should have been shorter. So I actually gave this match three and one quarters of the match. Three star, three um, and one quarter stars. I was not very impressed with this match at all. I just, uh, I, thought, I thought it was getting better. And really the fact that it was 27 minutes really bothered me just way too long. I felt like I wasted too much time watching this match. But it was okay. It was okay. It wasn't great. I thought it was going to be a little better than that. Okay, finally, the last match I saw. Stone Cold versus Rob Van Dam versus Kurt Angle. Tri triple threat match for the WWF Championship at No Mercy 2001. I've been wanting to watch this match for a while because former WrestlingDVNews.com reviewer uh, Brett Mix had great praises for his match, saying how it was arguably Stone Cold's greatest performance in a match. And so I just wanted to check it out, see how good it was. And at first I wasn't that impressed. I was, I was like, okay, it's a good match. But I didn't think Stone Cold looked that good. I thought like Rob Van Dam and Kring were very impressive. But I was thinking, like, this is Stone Cold's best performance. Like, I wasn't seeing it. So I decided to watch the match again, and just, you know, this time only watch Stone Cold wrestle, just focus on him the whole time. And I saw, that time I appreciated it a little more, because I could see how Stone Cold, you know, the triple draft match, usually in those matches, guys get breaks, you know. They'll, they'll be outside the ring for a while while the other two guys wrestle, and Stone Cold pretty much wrestled this whole match. He got, he was some time before he was, out, you know, outside the ring, and like, Kurt Angle and um, Rob Van Dam were brawling and fighting in the ring. But most of the time it was just like, Stone Cold and Angle going at each other, and Stone Cold versus Rob Van Dam going at each other, and Stone Cold just works like almost the whole match, and he just kept going like so. Was, that was impressive. See how Stone Cold like you know Kurt Angle and Rob Van Dam were taking several breaks during the match, but Stone Cold just kept going. He was like involved in almost every spot, so that so that part was pretty interesting. And what this match is kind of famous for is that um Vision Man comes out later in his match, and he hits Stone Cold in the back of the head with. A, with a chair shot, and Stone Cold actually started bleeding from the back of his head. He, he gave him a huge scar that he still has in his head to this day. And I think Stone Cold called it like the worst chair shot he ever took in. It's kind of, you know, ironic that the worst chair shot he ever got was from Vince Man, and then like, you know, like a real, not from a real wrestler. But, you know, it's been like 15 minutes, and Hi. after seeing um, the 27 minute Ric Flair versus Triple H match, I like this match a lot better because it felt quicker for 15 minutes. Just kind of went a lot better pace, and I thought Stone Cold and Rob Van Dam and Kurt Angle all had did really good in this match. So, so I gave this 
three and four quarter stars. I think Brett Mix gave it four stars. I didn't like it that much, but I thought it was a good match. That would be my second best match of um, the week. So I see, I see, I did it. So I'll see what I remember this. So my top four matches of the week were number five. I should have wrote this down. I forgot. Let's see number my number five um match of the week was the Shawn Michaels versus Bret Hart match Montreal Screwjob. Number four I think was The Rock versus Goldberg. Number three Chris Jericho versus Evan Bourne. Number two. Stone Cold versus Rob Van Dam versus um, Kurt Angle. And my number one match of the week, Vader versus Cactus Jack. And now my top five matches of summer. It's changed now. Let's see if I can remember this. Uh, coming in number five is going to be that Stone Cold versus Rob Van Dam versus um, Kurt Angle match. It's my number five match of summer. Number four match of summer is the... The Money in the Bank ladder match in which Miz wins the, the um, briefcase. My number two matches, number three match of summer is going to be um, the Money in the Bank ladder match in which Kane wins the briefcase. Number two match of summer is um, now Vader versus Kick Jack. And for the second week in a row, number one match of the summer is going to be Randy Orton versus Chris Manoir. And you can read all those results and the match that I reviewed um, this week in the description. Okay, thanks for watching.